How are you? I hope this finds you healthy and secure. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on your practice. It's amazing. Um, I keep running into issues in these translations. So, again, I will offer you a warning. As you read these books or any books from the... Nitrin Shu, Overseas Propagation Promotion Association. I don't know if it's because they're Fuji School. As you know, um, Fuji broke off from the other five major disciples of Nitrin, left Minobu, went to Fuji, starting with Nikko with two Ks for their own reasons. Be that as it may, these modern translations into English try to infiltrate the Western mind by using what they think is appropriate Western words, but they're absolutely abhorrent. They will mess up your understanding of Buddhism, and it, it annoys me to no end. It, it really it makes me angry is what it does. Um, and I ran into it again. So we've been talking about opening of the eyes, Gosho. And we've read, there's already under the Nitrin uh, Gosho playlist of the Gosho Zenshu, a reading of this particular Gosho. And I don't remember it anywhere saying the word soul, S-O-U-L, soul. Um, there may be other problems with those translations. Believe me, plenty of problems. Doing the same thing, trying to use Western language to appeal to Western minds with a complete misunderstanding or no understanding whatsoever, worse, of what they're saying. Completely not Buddhist. But to use a word like soul... When Shakyamuni spent years training his students on Anatman, look it up, Anatman, A-N-A-T-M-A-N, -A -A Anatman, no soul. There's no such thing as a soul. How can you believe in the logic, the reason, the rationale of Buddhism discussing impermanence, Discussing living moment to moment. Discussing mind, attitude and intent, and the Buddha in consciousness. How can you understand those concepts and adhere to this abhorrent, crazy magic of a soul? A soul, a bag of you that goes through eternity. There's like, like at the Big Bang... Every single name, Bob, June, Michaela, and so on and so forth, existed. Is it? It's nuts. It's more insane than believing Santa Claus is a real person that flies around the world in one night, dropping gifts through chimneys. As insane as that is. It's still more reasonable than believing in a soul. So to the publishers of these books, these translations, 
please get your head out of your ass. That is not Buddhism. Man, I'm so fed up with running into that. How is it? How can we in the West learn the method and the teachings of this brilliant mind of Shakyamuni Buddha, of Siddhartha Gautama, his realization. So amazing. He had thoughts about the universe and how the mind works that even today with all of our quantum physics and quantum reality and, and, and fields, energy fields and and. and and then in neuroscience, in the TED Talks, they're all just now starting to, just beginning to understand what this man knew 3,000 years ago. How can we pay homage to this man, to this enlightenment today by dragging these Witch brew of magic and freaking disgusting thought into the mix. It's absolutely heinous. But friends, we live in the age of degeneration. We live in the age when Shakyamuni, 3,000 years ago, said, this teaching will be in danger of being lost. Because of things like this. Because of misinterpretations and delusions and egos using these teachings for their own means. I won't be there to correct it. It will take somebody of that era to stand up and say, no, this is how to do it correctly. Forget all that baloney. And that was Nitrin. He's our mentor. And yet Nitrin too is not here to defend Shakyamuni's teachings. So we have things like this. I'm trying, Nitrin. I'm trying, Shakyamuni, to make clear I, too, am standing up and saying, the emperor's naked. So, with all of that proviso in mind, let's try something. Let's try to replace the word soul, which kind of makes my mouth feel dirty when it comes out. And let's replace it with the word mind, because that is something we all know. That is something real. If you don't believe in mind, then why are you thinking about it? Why do you even understand a term like believe? Use as your critical thought your mind. So let's continue. Nitrin says, since Shakyamuni Buddha is eternal. See, there it is. You can see how this slippery slope of meandering magical thought infects every sentence. Buddhaness, the nature of the formation of all energies manifesting, that's Buddha. Well, that's the recognition the mind perceives of Buddha-ness. It's not Buddha that energy forms into forms. That's just what the universe does. And that's what humans call life. But the word life is meaningless without a mind to identify it. Do you see? Without a mind, without any mind, the universe is just a machine. The universe is a machine, as I've explained before. It is the engine of life. It is the engine of taking energies 
in every combination and form that it can muster potential and manifesting some version of it. Every single one of those formations has a certain tendency in certain conditions. It has its own conditions. It responds to conditions. It being the tendencies. And because those are endless in combinations, that's potential. And the universe is just this big, huge explosion of potentials manifesting moment to moment. And we, with the mind, perceive that as time and space, yeah? Does time space exist? Of course it does. But does it give a crap whether you know it or not? No, it's just doing its thing. We, you and I, with a mind, put labels on things because that's what we do. That's how we identify. If that is that, and I am not that, then I am something else. What am I? Bob, Sylvain, whatever. Are you your name? Of course not. It's a convenient label we use in our thinking to identify. So what Buddhism says, what Shakyamuni said is all of that identifying, we get fooled by our own identifying and we think that we own things, we possess things, we have fear of losing those things. But that's not real. The process is moment to moment. Nothing ever exists forever. It's a process. It's like looking at a stream and saying that bubble, I can own that bubble. No, that bubble is a, a tendencies and conditions manifesting for a moment and then it's gone. But that doesn't mean the stream is any less there. That's amazing, that stream. Stop trying to own it. Just be with it. That's the whole thing. It's a perceptive change. It's an attitudinal change. If you stop trying to own it, you won't stress about it. You won't be anxious about it. You'll instead be incredibly joyful that you can be in it in moment to moment right along with it. <gasps> How amazing is that perceptive change? That's why we practice Buddhism. Not because after we die, we'll go to a special place with bingo 24-7. Or that our, our, our name will go on. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> okay. Man, I'm really upset. Since Shakyamuni identifies Buddhaness as eternal without time, this process that we can witness, and our witnessing of it is what we call Buddha. That's why Shakyamuni attained Buddha. It's a mind that perceives correctly the process of life, of all phenomena of the universe. Buddha is a perception that process it identifies is without time. But that is a mental cognition, a consciousness. That's what Buddha is. And all other Buddhas in the universe are his manifestations, of course. The mind that perceives is the same mind that labels. If water is water all over the universe, ask any scientist, H2O, 
then wherever it is, you can call it moon water, Jupiter water, or Andromeda water, or M82 water. It's still water. It's not different. It's just in a different place. But it's all an expression of the same chemical identity, hydrogen, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Atom. A molecule of water is a molecule of water. And when Buddha, Shakyamuni, as Buddha, communicates through Buddha and tells stories about this Buddha, that Buddha, those Buddhas from all over the universe, he's talking to people who can't fathom what you and I are talking about right now and identifying the universality of this thing called Buddha. But those other Buddhas are none other than Buddha. There is only one realization. There is only one universe of process that we are experiencing. But Sylvain, there may be multiverses. Yeah, absolutely. No denying that. But we're not experiencing those other universes. We're experiencing this one. Until science somehow shows us different. Right? Some quantum believers would say that you and I are experiencing multitudes of universes with every single thought moment of our minds. Okay. But my local Sylvain experience is this experience. And what manifests for my mind is a constant stream of potentials that are mine. Mine because they're colored, they're seen through. The lens of Sylvain is specific to all the billions of tendencies and conditions of energies that are manifesting moment to moment contiguously as this entity I call or was labeled Sylvain. Make sense? It doesn't get any more mystical than that. That's real. So as he already told us, and he's recapping here, saying when Shakyamuni with his Buddha perception taught to people who weren't able to have that perception started to expand their thinking that Buddha wasn't just local to him, although they didn't get that until the Lotus Sutra. He's constantly trying to expand their mind to thinking that Buddha-ness isn't just a person. It's a state of being and it's universal. But man, people don't want to get it. For 40 some years, he taught about expanding these people's minds till he finally felt he had taught them enough that it was time they shook loose this idea that he, Shakyamuni, was Buddha. He wasn't Buddha. He was an expression of mind that perceived Buddha the same way you and I can. So here goes Nichiren. Then those great bodhisattvas who were taught by all these manifested Buddhas and who are from other worlds are all disciples of Shakyamuni Buddha. It's a little sloppy. And I don't know, I'm not a Japanese scholar. I'm not a Sanskrit scholar. I'm not a Pali scholar. I'm not a Prakrit scholar which is the way Shakyamuni taught. I will remind you, he never wrote anything down. Everything was taught like a song, like you memorize lyrics, right? So he could ensure everybody learned it right. 
always fascinates me that when he taught it, he taught it in the first person. So that when you would sing the song, you would be invoking, I do this, I am that. Man, the clues are everywhere. If the duration of life of the Tathagata chapter, the 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, had not been expounded, it would be like the sky without the sun and moon, a country without a king, mountains and rivers without gems, or a man without a mind. Nevertheless, seemingly knowledgeable men of such provisional sects of Buddhism as Cheng Quan of the Qigong, Cha Xiang of the Sanran, Tzu En of the Hoso, and Kobo of the Shingon, tried to extol their own canons by stating, quote, The Lord of the Flower Garland Sutra represents the reward body of the Buddha, whereas that of the Lotus Sutra is the accommodative body of the Sutra. Or, the Buddha in the duration of the life of the Tathagata chapter of the Lotus is an illusion. It is the great sun Buddha who is enlightened. Obviously, you don't know how to read. Because it's very clear from the lifespan of the Tathagata chapter that the very thing Shakyamuni is doing is getting rid of the illusion. But these people just turn it on its head. The only reason they could do that is because most of the populace didn't know how to read and write or have access to these scholarly documents. So they could twist it around any way they wanted because people were ignorant. And what are you going to do in a dictatorial society, right? If the leader with military might behind him and, and policing behind them and all of the mechanisms of government that control you are looking at you and saying, this is what's true. You kind of have a tendency of saying, okay, okay, yeah, that's what's true. <laughs> Clouds cover the moon and slanderers hide wise men. Clouds cover the moon, and slanderers hide wise men. Right? The brilliance of Shakyamuni. Just by the avarice, the foolishness of a man or woman who wants, who wants to satiate their ego, can completely conceal the bright wisdom of Shakyamuni simply because he's not here. It's very easy to take over. When people slander, knowingly or unknowingly, ordinary yellow rocks appear to be gold and slanderers seem to be wise. Scholars in this age of decay, our day, our age of decay, blinded by slanderous words, do not see the value of the gold in the duration of the life of the Tathagatha chapter. They don't want to. It doesn't play into their needs, wants. At least they don't think it does. Even among men of the ten dissects, some are fooled into taking a yellow rock for gold. They should know that if Shakyamuni had not been, had not experienced, had not awakened, had not attained the timeless Buddhaness, that perspective of know, knowledge, knowing, experience, there could not have been so many who received guidance from him. Right? He'd just be another loon. Why do we still study Shakyamuni's teachings? Because they have incredible depth of understanding and merit. They work. If he was just saying, you know, whatever, chant Amida Buddha, and after you're dead, you'll go to a nice place, he'd just have slid into history as another 
loony religious. I shouldn't say that because the, the world today is so ruled by these magical, mystical religions. It, it, it offends a logical mind. It's offensive. And yet those people who have convinced themselves, life or death, that the world is magical. It's easy because it's a relinquishing of responsibility. This is another key, my friends, of your Buddhist practice. It's when you really start to understand these massive forces of energy that are moving through time space and you're participating in them and your Buddha-ness is manifesting with each chant. It becomes abundantly clear that as you flow with the universe, so do certain obstacles disappear or minimize. Opportunities come about almost seemingly without effort. But they are effort. They're your chanting. They're your daimo. They're your effort to be in rhythm with this moment-to-moment -moment instantiation of the universe. But there's something else that happens that maybe isn't so obvious. And that is responsibility. That your happiness, your success, your buddhaness, your ex full experience of this life, whatever the parameters are of your karma, your successful experience to the, to the nth degree of your maximal potential manifesting moment to moment, no one can do it for you. No one can give it to you. Nobody can take it away. It's all you. It's all you. That's total responsibility. That's amazing responsibility. It's all in your hands. These other religions, these spouting things about magical stuff that doesn't exist, they're just different ways of relinquishing control. Relinquishing your responsibility. You know what's really handy about that? Not for you, not for me. What's handy about that is that there's always some greedy bastard out there who says, yeah, I'll control for you. I'll tell you how to be. I'll tell you what you can be. I'll tell you what you can't be. Authoritarianism. We're getting a really hard look at that again in the modern history of governments throughout the world. Look at Turkey. Look at the things that are happening here with the root. I don't want to get too political, but it's obvious, isn't it? The moon does not shy away from its own reflection, but it cannot be reflected without water. What do you think he means by that? Buddha's Buddha. The universe does what it does. It doesn't care. It doesn't have a caring mechanism. It just does what it does. Just like anything else. Animals, trees, planets, solar systems, the universe. But a mind... A mind is a mirror. A mind can see, can reflect, can look upon a process and witness it, observe it. A conscious observer, that's what you are. And that conscious observation, Shakyamuni labeled it. We call it the ninth of the consciousnesses that we experience. Buddha. The realm within all realms, containing all realms, right? 3,000 realms in a single thought moment. All of this circles around the same exact idea. Become conscious.
Even though the Buddha hopes to convert the populace, in other words, to awaken the populace, convert. See, words of religion are throughout this translation. Please be aware, okay? He cannot show the eight major events in his life unless the causative relationship is ripe. In other words, people won't understand what they're not ready to hear. Minds will not understand. It is like Hinayana sages of Sravaka who have listened to the Mahayana teaching and ascended the ladder of Bodhisattva way leading to Buddhahood. They've been doing all the right things and mimicking and singing the songs and but they're not quite getting it. Until they've reached the step of Shoji in the distinct teaching of Shoju in the perfect teaching. In the end, however, they have to wait for the future for their Buddhahood. They're not achieving what they think they're achieving because they're resisting. They're still seeing themselves egotistically achieving. It's not a blue ribbon. It's an altered mental state. It is because they have listened only to the pre-Lotus Sutras and striven for self-control and self-emancipation, self-liberation. Yes, the goal of Buddhism is liberation. It's liberation from samsaric habit of attachment, possessing, but not of here words fail. Right? You don't become Alex Buddha, Sylvain Buddha, Alice Buddha. You are still Alice. But you enact, you enliven, you open your mind to Buddha nests. You travel your life as a bodhisattva. That's the identity part with Buddha-ness, Buddha mind. That Buddha that you experience isn't yours. It's your experience of Buddha. <laughs> Sounds subtle, but it's really important to understand the difference. If Lord Shakyamuni had attained Buddhahood for the first time in this world, the king of the Brahma heaven, Indra, sun god, moon god, the four heavenly kids and other, uh, kings <laughs> and others who owned this world as their domain from its beginning would have been the Buddha's disciples for only 40 years or so. It only would have worked as a cult for him while he was alive. But that's not the case. And so those who listened to the preaching of the Lotus Sutra for eight years on Mount Sacred Eagle could hardly think that the new master who had attained Buddhahood only 40 years or so ago had actually been the Buddha from time immemorial. Again, trying to disconnect this mental avarice of, of attaching Buddhaness, the function of the entire universe, to one man, one woman, one thing, you got to uncouple that. Because that is the very nature of attachment. Yeah? It seemed to them that Shakyamuni was behind those who had been in this world, such as the king of the Brahma heaven, Indra, and the four heavenly kings. They still were attaching these like it was an office plot. Like Shakyamuni was the office manager and all of these were his middle managers. This is the old ancient uh, authoritarian caste system thinking of Hindus and in India and Brahmins coming into your household and telling you what your karma is. See, Shakyamuni flew in the face of a lot of thousands of years of tradition called bullshit on all of that said, no, 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 you are self-determinate. In fact, 
by listening to these others and letting them tell you what to do, you are still being self-determinant. You're just deciding to let somebody else tell you what your determination is. Hello? <laughs> and we're still saying that today. But now, since it has been revealed that Shakyamuni attained enlightenment in the eternal past, Bodhisattvas Nikko, sunlight, Gakko, moonlight, disciples of medicine master Buddha in the world to the east, Bodhisattvas Kanon, Avalokitesvara, and Seishi, disciples of the Buddha of infinite life in the land to the west, various disciples of Buddhas in various lands throughout the universe, as well as disciples of the great sun Buddha, depicted in both the diamond realm mandala and the matrix stone realm mandala of the great sun Buddha, or yeah, sun Buddha sutra, and the diamond peak sutra, now are all students, disciples, arms of Shakyamuni. Again, repeating the same thing that all of these provisional teachings, they're, they're, they're just methods of learning to get you back to center, get you back to Buddha-ness. All inventions, imaginations, helpful teachings, fables, expedient means, skillful teachings to lead you back to what it is Shakyamuni had experienced, discovered, opened, is now telling you the method for reaching for yourself. Keeps repeating it 10 million different ways, yeah? Come on, Sylvain. Their disciples are, of course, Shakyamuni's disciples. Even the sun and moon and stars, which have been in this world from its beginning, are disciples of Shakyamuni Buddha. It's an interesting way. There's this constant confusion in the rhetoric identifying Shakyamuni with this particular Buddha but if it helps, I would restate that as the enlightenment of Buddhaness Shakyamuni is teaching us. Do you see what I mean? Having said all of this, sorry, having said all of this, the next chapter in this opening of the eyes book, various sects confused about the most venerable one. Well, it's kind of what we've been talking about. So I'm sure what Nietzsche is now going to approach is how all of these deviations from the central teaching of Shakyamuni are bolstering their own ego their for their own gain interpreting buddhaness in their own way because the most venerable one is what is your buddhaness the mind the human mind the sentient mind of perception with the one truth the perception of the universe as it is. The great machine engine of life. Of which we're all part of. Moving through time space. Or for you, since you're a Westerner like me, you go from left to right. <laughs> if you're Asian, you go what? Top to bottom, right to left. However, however you see time. Time is something we experience moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. And Buddhaness is our mental perception of those moments being common to everything. 
Nothing is static. Nothing is owned. Nothing is lost. You're simply in the flow. Like a raft in the rapids. You try to stop, it's trouble. Right? You try to go faster than the rapids, you're tempting disaster. Be at one with the rapids and see how you flow around obstacles and be amazed at the intense power of it by being in rhythm with it, in sync with it, instead of trying to constantly stab at it and hold on to it. How ridiculous would that seem? Yeah. Namo myo renge kyo. I have so much respect for your practice, so much respect for your mind, your logical, reasonable, rational mind. This is why I get so animated at these attempts, either intentional or non-intentional, to mess with your mind. It's intolerable. Please stay grounded on your reason, your rational mind. When you do, everything becomes clear. If you want to visualize it that way, that's Buddha-ness. Intensely rational. Moment to moment. Aha! Aha! Right? Watch what's happening. Watch how you're navigating it. Namo Myorengekyo. Thank you, thank you, thank you for liking, subscribing. Please subscribe. Download the audio podcast if those are helpful for you. Share. Be careful, but if you know somebody who could use a certain topic we talk about on this channel, doesn't have to be Gosho, could be other things, right? Check out the playlist. There may be something you feel like uh, it's time to take a dive into. These videos will be here. Right? I have some written materials I've collected. Some I've written myself that are on the bookstore at lulu.com. Certainly a lot of free information on threefoldlotus.com. All available, downloaded, printed, read it online, whatever. Yeah. And please, please, please get yourself a, an actual mandala from Nichiren. Not from somewhere else trying to pretend they know what they're doing. A Nichiren inscribed mandala. Oh, a digital copy of it. But still, a Nichiren mandala. That's who we're emulating that's whose doctrine we're following right why practice somebody else's like i say all the time we practice shakyamuni's lotus sutra buddhism plain and simple self-enlightenment nichiren is our modern day teacher our clarifier so that we can do this correctly namo myo rengekyo thank you for being here i'll see you in the next one Stay safe. Be kind to yourself. Bye for now.